Hello, this is section 2.1, day one, and we'll be start starting our conversation with the derivative and the tangent line problem. So we're going to focus on the definition of the derivative and what is a derivative. I know that's a new term for you. So um, to start off with average rate of change, that's just the slope calculated to two points of a function. All right. Now, instantaneous rate of change, that's what's new is the slope of the function at a single point. And we talked about this in section 1.1. How do we find the slope of a tangent line or an instantaneous rate of change? Well, that's why we're, that's what we're going to explore today. So determine to determine the rate at which a graph rises and falls at a single point or the instantaneous rate of change, we can use the slope of the tangent line at that point. In other words, the slope of a curve at a point P is the same as the slope of the tangent line at that point. All right. So that means instantaneous rate of change and slope of a tangent line are the same thing. And we're going to add another phrase called the derivative. All three of those mean the same thing. So now we need to change our concept of tangent from what we recall from geometry. A tangent line in calculus may eventually intersect the curve at another point, but in close proximity to a particular point, it intersects once. <clears throat> so here's some examples of tangent lines. So around this point here, this is a typical geometry problem, but in this case, you'll notice it hits the curve at another point. But around this specific point, it is tangent. And then in this case, it actually goes through the function, but again, it bounces, it hits that point here. Same thing, this is a vertical tangent line, this would be a horizontal tangent line. Okay, so in calculus, it is actually okay if it crosses the curve. All right, so the slope and the limit process. So instead of trying to approximate a tangent line, we'll use a secant line to go through the point of tangency and a second point on the graph. And this is what we did a little bit in section 1.1. So we picked a point here at C, and then we're gonna use another point on the curve, and we're going to cha change an X, some change an X away. So C plus the change in X is our X value, all right? And this would represent your change in x. And then up here, you have f of c and then f of c plus the change in x. And this is your change in y. So the change in y, you'd subtract the y values. Your change in x, you're going to subtract the x values. So we talked a little bit, again, back in section 1.1, we're going to take that change in x and we're going to make it smaller and smaller. And that's where the limit comes into play. If that change in x approaches zero, that's going to give us the slope of that tangent line. So this is just the average rate of change. There's slope formula, change in y over the change in x, and then I just filled it in with the y2 minus y1 over. And then remember, the c's cancel, so it's just the change in x. But this is our formula right there. All right. So find the slope of each graph using the limit process, and this is what the limit process is. This is your limit process. So let's try it. So limit as the change in x approaches zero. So we're going to do, I use our function here, negative five, and we'll place the x with the binomial, c plus the change in x, plus three, minus, and then f of c. So plug c in. There you go, all over the change in x. Now, just like in the last chapter, we want to plug zero in. That's your first step, but of course you can't. So let's try to simplify. So let's distribute combined like terms in the numerator. And when you do that, after you distribute, the five C's cancel, threes cancels, you're only left with negative five times the change in X over the change in X. Change in X is cancel, and you're left with negative five. Well, the limit of a number is just the number, and that's the answer. That's the slope of your tangent line, which makes sense. This is a line. Anywhere you pick along that line, the slope of the tangent line, since they're one and the same, is going to be negative 5. So it works. Now, it gets a little more complicated when you start plugging in binomials. All right. But same idea. So I want to know what is the slope of the tangent line. And in this case, it says we are finding what would represent the slope of the curve at any point on the curve. So notice they didn't tell us, find the slope of the tangent line at x equals 3. And they didn't do that here either. 
but in this case it's always going to be negative 5 no matter where you are on that graph. Well, with a curved function, you'll notice the t slope of the tangent line at a point over here is going to be a lot steeper and a negative number compared to the slope of the tangent line at 0. It would be 0. Or the slope of the tangent line over here is going to be a steeper positive number. So if they don't tell us specifically where to find the slope of the tangent line, then we're going to get a formula. So that's what we're going to do. So limit is the change in x approaches 0. First plug in the c plus the change in x into x, which is here plus 1, minus, and then your function with c. Remember, we're using, let me scroll back up here, we're using this formula here, all over the change in x. <clears throat> so square out that binomial, square the first, combine and double, square the last, distribute the negative, cancel what can cancel. Now you have two terms left that have a change in x in them. So factor that change in x out. So that's what's over here. Then you're able to cancel that change in x, and then you can finally plug 0 in for this remaining change in x. And that's your formula. So here's what this does. You can now pick any x value and plug it into this formula and it will spit out the slope of the tangent line. That's amazing. That We just went from not being able to find the slope of a tangent line to now we have a formula that we can plug any x value we want and it'll spit out the slope of the tangent line. And notch, we'll test it. We know the tangent line has a slope of 0 at 0. If we plug 0 into this formula, we get 0. Isn't that cool? I want to have you do that. So find the slope at this point, 1, 2. So if you plug 1, now notice we only need the x value. If you plug 1 in, you get 2. And if you plug negative 2 in, you get negative 4. And those are the slopes of the tangent lines. Now, in the previous example, we derived a function to represent the slope of the graph at the point x comma f of x. This um, derived function is called the derivative of f at x denoted as. So here's some new notation that you haven't seen before. f prime of x or dy dx. This is called, and this is the first derivative or the slope of the tangent line or the instantaneous rate of change. All three of those phrases are the same thing. <clears throat> so formal definition of a derivative. So the derivative of f is given by, so notice this new notation, f prime of x. I could have also written dy dx, but dy dx, notice y is what we're calling the function. In this case, we're naming it f, so that's why we like to use this notation. <clears throat> and then there it is. That's your. That's what we saw earlier. Now you might note, Cogswell, it's not a c anymore. Well, we're just using the more general x, okay? And then provided the limit exists, of course. So for all of x for which this limit exists, f prime of f prime is a function of x. So your derivative will be a function in terms of x. Now, if the limit doesn't exist, if there was an asymptote, if there's an open hole, there's no derivative. There's no slope of a tangent line. So the process of finding the derivative is called differentiation. Another word, so if you see differentiate, that means you're finding the derivative. And you'll get used to all of this new terminology. A function is differentiable at x if its derivative exists at x. A function is differentiable on an open interval if it's differentiable at every point in the interval. And other notations for derivatives besides f prime of x or dy dx are y prime, ddx of f of x, and then same thing here, d. Uh, you're finding the derivative of y in terms of x. This one's not as common. These you'll see a lot, all four of these. Okay? So I guess you would say the derivative of y with respect to x is how you'd pronounce that. Alrighty. So let's have some fun with this. So in example 1a, where our function was negative 5x plus 3, we noticed the slope was negative 5. In example 1b, where g of x is x squared plus 1, the slope was 2c. And we're just reinstating what we found earlier. Find the derivative by the limit process, also finding the derivative by using the definition of the derivative. Okay. So, in this case, f of x, we did the limit as the change in x approaches 0. And we plugged our x plus the change in x in to our function plus 3 and then plug the, the regular function in all over there. So we're using this new definition without the c. Now we're placed with the x. 
and you get the same thing. You got the negative 5 that we got earlier with the limit process. And then with g of x, same idea, we plug in the x plus the change in x, and then f of x. So x plus the change in x squared plus 1, and then this is just f of x, so x squared plus 1. Change x. If you reduce this all, you get 2x. And notice 2x looks very familiar. Earlier we got 2c. So you're getting the same answer. The limit process is just at a specific point, whereas here you're getting a general a, a derivative in terms of x. So they're the same thing, basically. Right. So when it says find the derivative, we're going to use this definition of derivative here. Now, those of you who have a little exposure to calculus, if it says use the definition of derivative, I'm going to want to see this work. And you'll have to show me every step. And I do realize that if you've seen, if you've done any types of derivatives, you can already tell me the answer is 6x minus 5. I get that. And at least you'll be able to check your answer, but I'm going to be following every step you do. I'm going to want to see that you've carried through your limit notation, that you've properly reduced, that you show me this really important step of canceling out the change in x, and you show me you plug 0 in, and I want to be able to follow your steps. Okay, so make sure you follow the instructions. <clears throat> okay, so wrote down the formula. Take your function, replace every x with this binomial. That's what I did first minus and then the function. Don't forget to distribute your negative. Cancel everything you can. You'll have multiple terms left probably, so factor a change in x out of all of them. This cancels and then don't forget to plug zero in. Make sure you're carrying through that limit notation. That is very important. And notice how I've written my answer. f prime of x equals 6x minus 5. So don't forget what that means. Now I have a formula where I can pick any x value I want, plug it into that formula, and it will spit out the slope of the tangent line along that curve. Isn't that cool? All right, and then it says, now find the slope of the function at 1 comma negative 4. And notice I only need the x value, so I'm going to plug 1 in. f prime of 1 is 1. So the slope of the tangent line at 1 is 1. All right, so find the derivative of this lovely function here. Okay, now you might make a little note to yourself that there is a place on this function where it would not be differentiable, and that's of course at zero. You have an asymptote there, so keep that in mind. But you should, but that's understood that this is the formula for the slope of the tangent line, the derivative. We just know that at zero, it's not differentiable. Okay, but anyways, so use your formula, x plus the change in x, plugged in, and then our original function. So remember, whenever you have a fraction within a fraction, clear them out. So get the common denominator, multiply in the numerator and denominator, don't distribute in the denominator. So after you've cleared the fractions, distribute that negative 2, the 2x and negative 2x cancel, and then your change in x's cancel. So in this step, I was actually able to plug 0 into that change in x. So I have a negative 2 left in the numerator, x times x in the denominator, and negative 2 over x squared is the derivative. Okay. And then it says, find the slope of the derivative at negative 2, negative 1. So notice I didn't ask you at 0, because it's not defined. But at negative 2, we're good to go. So if you plug negative 2 into your derivative, this is the slope of the tangent line. So it must be a decreasing function, because our sl slope of our tangent line is negative. All right, so there is another approach for finding the derivative of a function at one specific point. Just substitute in the specific x value of the beginning of the limit function instead of at the end. This is not used often since it is just as much work as finding the derivative and doesn't tell us nearly as much about the slopes as in various points of the function. So what is that? what that's trying to say is why would you, so scrolling back up here, <clears throat> If ever I asked for the specific derivative at a specific point, we could put the number in for c. And that would make our calculations a little bit easier, but why not just get the formula and then you will know the slope of the tangent line anywhere on the graph. So it makes more sense to get the formula, not just a specific slope at a specific point. Okay, you will definitely need to practice the algebra behind all these. So make sure you're doing your homework and email me if you have any questions.